So my name is Oshin Lunny. I am Chief Evangelist at Open Market and an independent uh, event MC, if we haven't met before. <clears throat> In my opening remarks today, I spoke about the four business imperatives uh, that Gartner wrote about our age of the customer, this age of the phono sapiens. And uh, one of the key messages that Gartner had for businesses to be successful is to disrupt or be disrupted, to be a digital disruptor. And that's nowhere more prevalent in transport uh, because really one of the prime examples of a technology coming in with a customer experience that's so good, it disrupts an entire industry uh, is of course Uber. And so there's a word for this level of complete um, uh, disruption, which is Uberization. And uh, for many times, many years ago, uh, I used to go to a lot of 3PL, third party logistics conferences, and Uberization, the word Uberization was mentioned a lot on stage with a mixture of admiration and fear, because people really didn't know what was going to happen next. Uh, but one company that I can, you know, very happily say have been absolutely tireless in their pursuit of innovation uh, is where our next speaker is from. And uh, it's going to be a really fascinating uh, keynote presentation all about enabling the next generation of trade and logistics by using blockchain. And this is an incredibly, incredibly innovative company. And our speaker joins us all the way. He's, he's from France originally, but he's based in Miami, Florida now. Um, please welcome to the stage the Vice President from DHL Customer Solutions and Innovation, Mr. Nabil Maluli. Thank you so much. Cheers. Hey. Awesome, man. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Nabil, and I'm going to talk to you about blockchain in the trade and logistics space. We just got a presentation and a, a fireside chat that gave a lot of explanations, so I think I'm not going to go too much into uh, to the detail of this. But uh, probably um, you realize this, but not to that extent, and probably thinking about why blockchain is important in the trade and logistics. Everything you see here in this room, everything you consume, everything you buy, uh, has been transported across the globe in most of the cases. 90% um, actually of trade goes by sea. Um, so everything you see, 90% have been transported at some point by sea. So any incremental change or any improvement done in that industry actually has huge impact around society. So productivity improvement, technology improvements have the potential actually to change the life of the people in terms of different aspects that we're going to talk about. So I think that's going to be very, um, very important. Before I go into that, I think it's very good to get a sense from the audience. There's a big debate and I think we also heard different perspectives in the sessions before as to blockchain being a hyper reality. Some people have said it's the new internet, some have said that it's going to change significantly industries, it's going to change the world, and some people have said, well, it is a, going to bring different, different improvements in different uh, industries, but might not be such a game changer. So who in this room believes that it's going to have a significant impact in their respective industry as changing such as things such as um, the entire business that they are, they are in today? Can you raise your hand, please? Okay, and the one that think it's really a hype and it's not going to have a lot of impact? Okay, so I guess because you're sitting in this room, we probably don't have a full representation of the society, uh, and because you're obviously attending here. Um, fact is, there's already 2.1 billion spent in 2018 into blockchain, into development. If you look at Fortune 500, more than 50% of the companies already have a program. They're investing, they're trying to investigate. But also, as we heard before in the session, it is the early stage of the development. So not a new concept, but it did move, interestingly, um, from a, a transactional, and we tie all, also a lot blockchain right to cryptocurrencies. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it moved from a transactional aspect into more of um, a, a, a contractual aspect, and as well now moving into different applications. So the, the technology itself is also evolving as to the use case, and I think now every industry is at, st is at, at that stage of application and how do I apply the technology to my, to my industry. And we talk a lot about the financial sector, but it is definitely not the only one that is being impacted. So what, what has made this significant acceleration about the, um, the fact that everybody talks about that across industries? Anybody wants to take a shot at this? What has made the key a, a aspect as to this incremental change about awareness about blockchain? I'm sure you guys have some ideas. 
No volunteers? Okay. So um, last year, we saw a crazy uh, uh, um, increase of the value of Bitcoin, right? Um, and interestingly, obviously, media and everybody in the world have started to speak about that. And I love the face of this guy because I think that's probably the face that most of us, you know, have, have done when we heard about, you know, Bitcoin going to $20,000 almost in December when really what you can trade at that point and the value of the currency is still, is still a big debate, right? So I think that's a very interesting topic. And when you look also, a very good indicator is, is Google search, right? So when you look at, at the search globally, Bitcoin was appearing actually as to how to buy Bitcoin, um, but also just as a general search on the top five topics, right, across the globe. So I think this is also a very good indication as to 2017 being a, 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 a very important year for, for, the, for the technology itself. And obviously, Bitcoin is not uh, um, uh, directly tied into the blockchain aspect in all the aspects, but the, in the underlying technology is definitely um, what is bringing you know, people and perception towards looking at the two of them jointly. And obviously, there are many other cryptocurrencies, not only Bitcoin. Um, but we also have, I think I like this slide, we also have a different interpretation depending on who you talk to as to the impact and, and how it's, how, how it's um, impacting our businesses and, and our potential life in, in the future. So to me, and we spoke about that, so I'm going to make it very short. Short, so um, the, the key factor into this is really that concept of trust. So traditionally, we put all the, um, all the trust and the regulation aspect into few institutions, and that includes government, includes bank, and so on. And we've seen in the recent years a move towards a, a very, very successful business model with, with the concept of sharing economy, where as a society, we have the impression that we're actually sharing between us um, assets and so on, housing and, and so on. But the reality is, um, this is still controlled by an entity, right? I mean, if you look at Airbnb, even if I share my house with you and you come and you stay with me, well, the reality is I have only your information until you do the booking and so on. So Airbnb still remain that orchestrator. When we go into the distributed um, ledger and really the, um, the, the full blockchain technology, the idea goes into democratizing that, that, um, that model and putting it available either on the, on the public um, uh, or on the private uh, blockchain, right? So here there is very um, also different approach to this. I think when we look at the public one, that's really where all the cryptocurrencies are, uh, belong. And when we look at the, at the private one, is really where most of the corporation are moving into. Um, because it does give a certain level of confidence to the people that there is a certain framework. Um, but I, I think it's a very good uh, parallel that you can really have both and you can, depending on the use of what you want to do, you have access to, to the two options. Uh, but from a corporate perspective, I definitely think that uh, the private uh, a blockchain is, is definitely something where you might have um, much more acceptation from a, from a corporate perspective. So going into the logistic aspect of this, um, I think there are, there are three dimensions that are very important. Um, faster, leaner, transparency and trustability, and smart contract. So um, when we look into the three, the three aspects of the three dimension, first one, um, this is what happened, and I'm certainly not going to go into the detail of this, but this is what happened when uh, uh, a shipment goes from Spain, let's say, into Brazil, right, uh, uh, of chairs that you are sitting on. There is multiple stakeholders through the process, from the people that are fabricating until the customer, which is, which is in destination. Um, and in a regular shipment, you will have a more or less 200 touch point communication, being phone calls, emails, or just conversation to make it happen through 30 stakeholders into the process. And, and that creates a lot of cost, creates a lot of um, um, productivity challenges, and consequently, the ones that are actually paying for this is, is the final customer, right? Because all this is build, built into the cost of anything we buy. So as you can start to 
make these processes leaner and faster, you can actually have a significant impact on the process. And, and what we're seeing is we're not trying to tackle everything at the same time, but we're looking at, at each one of the steps and seeing which one has the more value. The other thing is trustability. So as you start to have data on product from inception, you have the ability to trace all, all the characteristics of product. And that's really also very helpful for brands, especially brands that are oriented towards sustainability um, or ethical practice. Um, the other one here is, is on the odometer. Just in Germany alone, you have a $7.2 billion of value of fraud in odometer manipulation. So as you start to, to, um, to really build technology that allow you to control that much better and much tighter, you really have a, a huge impact. I think on the smart contract, it's pretty straightforward. Based on the graph I showed before of all the stakeholders, um, agreements on transports are already made before you actually ship the product. So what happened today is there is a ping pong between the different stakeholders as to this is the cost, uh, this is the invoice, and so on. And um, by enabling smart contract to be put in place, you can actually remove a lot of the friction through the process, and that's also very powerful. So key challenges, I think these ones are not only for the logistic industry, I think some of them are, are, um, are valid across the board, but I think uh, if we look at this, the industry adoption is, is definitely a key one, especially on the logistics space, because most of the companies operate under landscape, technological landscape that are relatively old, um, or are not maybe the latest versions of, of software solutions. Um, the level of knowledge of organization also is very important. I mean, we are in the early stage of the technology, so there is a lot to be done there. Um, the organization and the culture of the company towards new technology like this that can really shift the way the company actually work. Um, and the governance aspect and standard, right? As you try to put a technology across different companies uh, interacting um, for the process of, of transport, you really have to have a way that you can integrate the different, the different uh, systems, um, a policy protocols uh, across the board. So to wrap up, I think uh, we're taking a path uh, where we are really trying to influence these three dimensions here, collaboration, building up knowledge in the, in the organization, um, to just look at the different use case and also try to get a feel from the business as to where we should focus on. And I think the last point is really to, to engage with the different people on the business level to get a sense of the business needs because the last thing you want to do is to be this guy on the slide, and I don't know if, if the one on the back can see, but a, the most important is to have defined what are the problems you're going to tackle before you look at the technology. Because otherwise, if you do the other way around and you take the technology and you're like, okay, how do we apply this to the business without looking at which, which process or which aspect of the business you can actually significantly increment with the technology, uh, then you're going to have a problem in terms of acceptance, but also ability to roll out a, and, and make something that is significantly impactful more than something that is trendy. Thank you very much for the time.